design was the uh, Robert Rauschenberg Foundation uh, founded? So the Robert Rauschenberg Foundation was started several decades ago during the lifetime of Bob himself. And uh, during that time, it was meant as a vehicle for him to act uh, upon his very philanthropic instincts that we had seen play out in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Um, it hasn't been until uh, recently, today, uh, 2012, when all of the assets from his trust and estate had been converted into the foundation, which now we can carry forward his legacy and interests, um, which are both to perpetuate the use and access to his artwork, as well as um, to develop and, uh, and give away uh, support for his philanthropic interests. The mission of the Robert Rauschenberg Foundation is very similar to the mission of many artist foundations. There is the aspect of supporting the understanding and expansion of that artist's uh, work access to that work and the scholarship of that work. The second part of the missions um, are around the philanthropy and uh, the support of either art-related initiatives or initiatives which uh, speak about the values and things which were important to the artist. Um, the Robert Rauschenberg Foundation has both of those uh, in its mission. and. So in the scholarship, you see things such as uh, exhibitions, a catalog resume. We'll be developing a scholarship center out of his New York residence, 381 Lafayette. And um, in the spirit of Robert Rauschenberg, we'll actually be using his Captiva residence um, as, or as, a, as a studio and residence for artists and scholars alike to continue new work. The second half of the mission um, which is continuing his philanthropic support. Bob was a very generous spirit, and everybody knows that he was had a particularly innovative approach towards supporting initiatives. In the 60s and the 70s and 80s, he was very well known as an artist who was an activist. So he created artwork to support the awareness, but also the funding of such things as the very first Earth Day, um, things as uh, health and human services such as um, AIDS and the recognition of this epidemic. Um, he was interested in uh, international freedoms such as freeing Tibet. Um, in the 80s you saw his Rocky uh, project which was an exploration about how art could be used as a peacekeeping mission uh, across borders. And these are things that we're using uh, to develop our own philanthropic strategy. Um, we started small uh, on a U.S. basis, but we believe that our philanthropy will grow similar to Bob's activities you know, throughout the course of his life to an international scope. Um, you have this exhibition now here. Uh, are you planning more exhibitions um, in this um, uh, building? Well, 381 Lafayette was originally Bob's um, home and studio. He purchased it in the 60s. He lived here for five years and then he actually went and purchased uh, Captiva and lived there full time, but did keep this incredible facility, um, you know, uh, and it became essentially the curatorial center and Bob would come and stay here when he was in town. It used to be an orphanage which is actually appropriate for Bob since he's such a supporter of other people. And um, we're standing in the chapel of what was the orphanage. There's a great video of Bob that you could see on YouTube where he's sitting on top of a ladder and he's talking about um, his work relative to abstract expressionism, which is really sort of a fun video. We're using this space now to um, show work of Bob's. And one of the reasons we wanted to do this video was to make sure that people could see this exhibition because right now this uh, building is not open to the public since it's a private, uh, private organization. This will be, uh, it is and it will be increasingly accessible to scholars who want to look at the archives and um, all of the archives from Florida are coming up this uh, in the next couple of weeks for scholars to look through anything relating to not only Robert Rauschenberg, but all of the people who surrounded Bob. When you look at the history of Bob's work, it's never in isolation. 
So Bob's history also includes John Cage. It includes Merce Cunningham. It includes Trisha Brown. It includes uh, Falstrom. It includes Billy Kluver in the art and technology. So there's so many ways in which um, by looking at the scholarship of Bob, you're really looking at the scholarship of an era. And so this um, presentation of the cardboards is an initial um, foray into presenting Bob's work and um, possibly even presenting other people's work. So some of the very exciting things we have coming up at the Robert Rauschenberg Foundation in the fall are the introduction of the pilot program at our Captiva residence, which will begin this fall and move into 2012. Um, this is 26 acres with about nine homes where artists can come and live on this compound and use Bob's studio um, for their own work, but also to work together if they're interested. We um, will be announcing some of the grants that we have in terms of artist uh, innovation and collaboration, but also the responsive grants and the seed grants that we're very excited about. And the last thing is in the fall we'll be uh, having an exhibition um, over the term of the election. And we have an exhibition at our 19th Street project space. This used to be a warehouse that Bob had in town. It's on 19th Street between 9th and 10th. And we have Allison Gingeris, who is curating a show with Jonathan Horowitz on the issues of the election. And we think this is very topical because Bob was such an activist and was very interested in what were the political themes and undercurrents that people are discussing. And so Allison and Jonathan are going to be looking at that and the artwork that addresses these issues that we're facing in our election year. So it should be exciting.